my name is Madison and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I'm here to do my absolute best to talk about and express my love for a small little originally Russian book, Vida Nostra. Please settle down grab yourself some tea, some earbuds, and something to do while you put me in the background because I know I'm annoying, especially when it comes to this book. Um, I'm going to do my absolute best to explain and describe to you guys how much I adore this book. And I'm not sure I'm going to do a good job about it, but I'm going to do my best. So, Vita Nostra is a story that follows this character named Sasha and Sasha meets this guy on the beach one day on a summer vacation and he ends up giving her these tasks and I'm not gonna say what the tasks are because when I first read the book I was absolutely blown into shock by what they were and that's also the only thing about this book I actually comprehended while reading <laughs> we'll try and get back to that eventually but I'm probably gonna forget Knowing me, I'm probably going to forget. Um, but she meets this guy, and he ends up giving her these tasks, and at the end, she produces some way, some coins. And after she finishes high school, this guy comes back and gives her an application to Torpa, a school of speciality and technologies. And she has to go to the school, Otherwise, something bad will happen to her family. And so this book is the first three years of her life at this school and her last year of high school. So it's jam-packed of stuff. And it was beautifully written, and I think the pace was also fantastic. So... Yeah, four years in this story. I wonder if we'll see her die by the end of this series because I think there's three or four books. Goodreads, Goodreads doesn't know what. Goodreads doesn't know how many books there are, so I don't know how many books there are. Um, but she goes to this school and it's just... It is so weird. And I don't... That's all, that's all I'm going to say. She goes to this school and I love it. And now let me talk more about it. I knew a hundred pages into this book that it was going to be a five star. And I think it's so crazy because I always hate to like be enjoying a book and then say, this is probably going to be a five star because most of the times it doesn't end up being a five star. I end up being really disappointed when I get to the end. And I feel like I jinxed it at the start of the book by saying that I thought it was going to be a five star. But some part of me knew that no matter how confused I was going to get, I was going to end up deciding that this book would be my entire personality. Like, I'm going to go to work today and it's going to take me three tries to get through the door into the building. So, honestly, I'm making this my personality. Uh, I loved this book. I knew this book was going to be a five star at 100 pages. At 200 pages, I was claiming this was going to be a favorite book. And at, by the time I had uh, 60 pages left, I was pretty, pretty certain that this was going to become a new favorite book of all time. And after finishing it, it could possibly be my favorite book of all time. Currently, my favorite book of all time is Out of My Mind by Sharon M. Drapper. And while that title fits very accurately towards your mood while reading Vita Nostra, the two books are on completely different levels. Um, I don't know what happened during this book. And... It's very weird that, I feel like it's very weird that I enjoyed this book so much because I really, while reading, I really didn't comp, like, I really didn't understand, like, any of it. I really didn't. And it's so weird because I think while reading this book, I felt like Sasha and how Sasha felt while doing her schoolwork for Torpa's speciality school. Like... 
That probably wasn't by design, and I hope I'm not the only one who left this book with such confusion. I hope I'm not stupid. Like, I hope that I'm not the only one who read this book and loved it, but also was like, what the hell just happened? Like, I'm not the only one, am I? Please tell me I'm not the only one. Please tell me that the point was that you weren't supposed to comprehend anything. Because I really, I don't know what happened. I don't know the fantasy element of this. I'm really, I really don't know. And I loved this book. This, I think my confusion toward this book while reading and towards the world and what the heck was going on, I feel like that added to my enjoyment because I was here for the experience and I did not care whether or not I understood what was going on. But somehow I did grasp the bare basics of what was going on. See, I just kicked what you guys are sitting on, I apologize. But see, what would happen is after 30 pages of reading this book, I had to put it down for the day because after 30 pages, my brain was complete mush. This book has so much lore, so much metaphysics, if that's what it is, so much like psychological elements and by the end, I feel like I'm in an English class. <laughs> like it has so much to it that after 30 pages, my mind just started reading on auto and I was not like, I was not reading. I was just like looking at the words. They were going in one eye and straight out the other. Like my brain was not fast enough to catch on to anything. So after 30 pages, I would have to put this down for the day. But somehow, I would go to bed and the next time I picked it up, I would have grasped what I had previously read. And while, you know, before I hit that 30 page mark, I would be reading and I would be like, what? But okay, I'd, I'd be okay about it. I'd be like, huh? But I'd be totally fine about that. I would wake up the next day and continue reading and I would somehow have digested what had happened. By the end of the book, was it still happening? Yes. By the end of the book, was that happening and was I understanding what was going on? No. Is this like an angelic book? Is this like a mind effery book? Like what is this book? What is it? I don't know, but I freaking love it. I love this book so much. And one of the reasons why I love this book so much is the fact that I don't understand it. And I think this is one book that would be so much better upon reread. And that's saying something because this is a five star and a new all time favorite book that could possibly uh, kick my current favorite all time favorite book out of the top number one spot. Okay? It could do it. And I think when I reread it, because this will be a book I reread. I think that it will end up pushing out of my mind, out of the top spot as my favorite book. Because I think this would just be so much better upon reread. Because the first time you read it, you don't understand anything. And I finished it. And I still really don't understand anything. Like, I need the sequel to Vita Nostra just so I can understand what in the world happened at the end of this book. How did it end? What happened to Sasha? I don't know, and I love that. I love that for me. I love that about this book. I don't know what happened, but I and I want to know what happened. And I feel like when you if you reread it, because like I finished it and then I went back and I reread the first couple pages. And I feel like like I never do that. Like I finish a book, I put it back on the shelf and I move on. Like I don't instantly want to reread a book after I finished it, but with Vita Nostra. I did. I do. I still want to. And I will reread this book as soon as I get my own copy because this is a library copy, baby, and I want my own. But I just think if you were to reread this book, and I will eventually have an answer to whether or not this is true, but just knowing 
the very little bit of information that you've gathered upon your first read, I think it would just like, you would build, it would build upon the reading experience the second time around. And then after that second time, you'd have an even bigger clump of information, so then when you reread it the third time, you would gather even more information. And, because there's some stuff that was referenced like 30 pages after it was originally mentioned, and I was like, what? And I just think knowing that, going into it, and being able to like know it the first time you see it is like, what? And I also don't understand anything about the grammar. I don't understand the grammar. At the end of this book, it just becomes a festive of a whole bunch of different grammar terms, and I don't understand any of it, but I absolutely loved it. Ah, like, I don't understand. Is this like an angelic book? Is this like a demon book? Is this like a monster book? Like, what is this? What is this? Oh, I loved it so much. I loved it so much. And I feel like it's so weird that I love it so much, despite not not knowing anything about it, like, I've read it, I could tell you the plot, but I can't tell you exactly, like, what. It's so hard, I feel like it's, that's, it doesn't make any sense, because I could tell you everything that happened. I could explain to you, to the best of my abilities, what happened with the applied sciences class and what happened with the speciality class and I could tell you how much I adore this, the main character Sasha and how much I really like the character of Kostya but I wouldn't be able to explain to you what it all means because I don't know what it all means but oh my god guys I need you to read this book okay I need you to read this book because I need to talk about it with somebody I need to talk about it with somebody. Something that I really think fits with this book is, so, okay, basically, when I was about 100 pages into it, I made an Instagram story where I talked about it, and Sophie, my dear friend Sophie, who we're, I'm writing a book with, it's been a while, but we, 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 we're kind of writing a book. We're supposed to be writing a book, okay, let's just say that. Um... I'll leave her channel down below, but she instantly DM'd me and said, what's that book? I want to read it. And so I, you know, I sent her the title. I, t I, I said, I love it. I haven't even read, I haven't even finished it, and I want to read every book by these authors. And I've already claimed Marina and Sergi as new favorite authors. Like, I'd only done a hundred pages of the story at that point in time, and I was already making such bold claims. Bold claims well, that did happen to come through, by the way. This is the only book by them I've read, but I'm pretty sure I will stick, I will stay true to that. Um, actually, I already have one of their other books, so, anywho. But as I continued reading, I sent Sophie these videos of my reaction. I said spoiler free, but I was just like, Sophie, I don't know what's going on, but I love it. And after I finished it, I sent her like a 15 minute long trail of Instagram videos in her in DMs. And I just raved about this book without like saying anything really. And after I did the rave about how great this book was, I said, Sophie, now when you read it, I need you to go into it with no expectations. Go into it with the lowest expectations that you can. Because I think that's the way to experience this book. And I know that is so difficult to do after you hear somebody talk about how much they love it. But I think that's just what you need to do. Because you need to go into this book not expecting anything and then be blown away by how much you get. While I don't think Aliette de Bedard, I know I butchered that, I don't think, well I don't think she said it in the perfect words. I think what she said fits pretty well. She said that this was an amazing book, and right there, definitely agree, but she also said 
that this is a dark Harry Potter on steroids with a hefty dose of metaphysics. And I would like to edit that. I would say that this is what Harry Potter could have been had J.K. Rowling snorted cocaine, wrote the entire series while drunk, and then sent it into her editor the following day with no edits. And then some. And I know that is just doesn't make any sense, but that's exactly how I feel about this book. And I just, I love it. I love this book so much. And the fact that I have to wait a year for this sequel is like torture itself. Because I don't understand how this ended. I don't know how it ended. Sasha, are you okay? Like what? How did it end? And I have to wait a whole year to find that out and get my own, my hands on a copy of this book. Like, I have to wait a year for the sequel. And I will be rereading this next year. I wonder if when I reread it, if I should make like a whole spoilery reading vlog, just to like talk about everything as I'm reading it. So if you would be interested in that, tell me in the comment section. But yeah, I love this book. And um, this is one book that I wish I could reread for the first time. And I mean, everybody says they would love to reread, you know, a book for the first time. And that's because like, you know, they really enjoyed it. They gave it five stars. They thought the twists were surprising. That's why they would want to reread it. But I would want to reread this. Uh, I guess I would want to read this for the first time again because of how it made me feel and because of how much enjoyment I got out of being so confused. I don't think there are ever going to be as many stories that I enjoy despite the fact that I was confused with the entire thing. I just don't think that that is something that humans are capable of, is enjoyed something despite being entirely confused during the whole process. I don't think that's something that we can do all that much. But I did all that much for these entire 404 pages? 404 pages. I loved it. Confused about the entire thing. I loved it. I'm especially confused about the ending. Because when I tell you this book went off the rails, I mean it. Like, grammar. Grammar plays such a big role in this book. And that's unbelievable. So, I currently have a, a library copy of this book. But last night, while I still had 100 pages to go, I went to my mom and I said, Mom, I need you to buy me three copies of this book. And she instantly was like, no, I'm not doing it. And then I was like, but mom, listen, okay? Because this isn't actually from my library. I work in a library, in case you didn't know. Uh, so this is actually from a neighboring library. And I told her, mom, I need three copies. I need one copy that I could gift to the library and so that every time a person comes into the library, I could shove this book into their hands and say, read it, read it right now. And then she replied, Madison, I don't think you're allowed to harass people like that. And I was like, such a shame. And then I said, I also need two copies so that one copy can be a copy that I go through and annotate and that the other copy can just be a plain copy that I use to reread. She said no, but that had never stopped me before. I got two copies of the Akatar series written by an author that I despise and I don't support anymore and also hate a lot of her book, her newest book, so, you know. So if I can do that for her, I think I can do that for what is possibly one of my favorite books of all time. I mean, it is, but it's possibly THE favorite book of all time. Some quick things about this book. Uh, the characters, I really liked. I loved Sasha. I loved Sasha's relationship dynamic with Kostya. Loved in the first year when she did the did the thing. If you've read it, you know what she did to Kostya at the end of 
first year or whatever, around the end, middle of first year, or whatever it is. Um, I also really liked Jaeger, uh, Jaeger, Jaeger. Um, it sounds like I'm saying Aaron's last name, but I'm not. I'm not saying Aaron Jaeger, I'm saying Jaeger, Jaeger. I don't know. I really should have looked up how to pronounce their names, but oh well. Um, I apologize for butchering them. I really liked the teachers. I really liked the guy with glasses, which I, I'm not going to try and pronounce his name. And I also liked Nikolai. And if it's Nikolay, I apologize. Uh, but I really liked both those teachers and whatever is going on with Nikolai and his situation, I still don't exactly understand. But I'm excited to figure it out. I will eventually figure it out. I'll come to a very close understanding. I also really loved the world, and I loved the lore in this book. I loved how detailed everything was, because the magic, if there's magic, the, uh, the, the, the system, the, the schoolwork, you could really tell that the schoolwork in this book had a lot of thought put into it. I don't think that you could have written such a complex learning system without any thought. Or maybe you guys did, and that's why it's so great, and that's why it's so confusing. But also makes all the sense. Then again, makes no sense. This book is a mix of emotions, and I love it! I loved the writing style as well, and while I don't know if the writing style is because of the translator or because of how the original authors wrote it, I absolutely adore how it was written. Despite all of the confusing aspects and the mind mushing story after a couple of pages, it was written so simplistically. And with all the big words and the, compu the confusing aspects and the grammar part of it that I, I don't understand at all and hopefully as this series goes on I will grow to understand more of it. Hopefully as I reread this book several times and eventually reread the sequel several times as long as I love it like you know I don't know how I couldn't. If it's anything like this one I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it. Um, I think I will come to understand it more but I really liked how it was written and that's why it's one reason why I want to read all of their books is because of how it's written and the writing style and like I said that could be part of how it was translated was it was Julia who wrote it so beautifully but I don't think any translator could translate a story so well and have it be written so well if it wasn't at least part to how it was originally written and I love this book. I can't wait to get my hands on my own copy, copies, and I will do my best to make sure my own library gets a copy of this because this is one book that I would love to recommend. I would not recommend this to everybody though. This is a book that I would recommend to very specific people because you need to be okay with being confused. Or I'm just stupid. Like, I don't know what, which it is. Like, am I stupid? Or was this supposed to be confusing? I really don't know. I guess I would have to personally ask the authors. I need to ask. I need to know. Am I stupid is the question. But honestly, if I'm not stupid, and we'll go with that assumption, then I think while I would, I love this book. And it's so fantastic and I enjoyed it so much. I understand why other people did it. I understand why people don't like it because of how confusing it is and because of the world and the unbelievable is it magic, is it not magic, is it angels, is it demons, is it, is it all a dream? Like I don't know. Like I know why people don't like it and it's because of that. And while I love it, I wouldn't recommend it to everybody because of that. And that's why I told Sophie, my screen just went dark, that's why I told Sophie when she was so determined to read it, after I finished it, I told her that you have to go into it with low 
to no expectations. And that's so that's such a difficult thing to do after you watch and are friends with somebody who adores the story. That's such a difficult thing to do. But I don't think you will fully understand and enjoy the book unless you go into it not expecting much because it's so weird. So would I recommend this to everybody? No, but dang it, do I wish I could. I love this book, and I just want to say a big, big thank you to Julia Maytov Hersey for translating this story. I want to say thank you so much to wanting your friends and family to read this odd little uh, this odd little book that you liked because I loved it and thank you also thank you to Marina and Sergi and also their daughter Anastasia I believe that's what her name is let's see it's... yes and also a big thank you to their daughter Anastasia for writing this book for getting the inspiration off of their daughter I really 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 loved it and I'm very excited to read more from you guys and as soon as I'm able to I will be pre-ordering the sequel and I also am going to be keeping an eye out for any special editions of this book because I want I want them all I want them all now I have to go to work return this little thing and try and convince my library to get a copy of it. It's such a shame that they don't have one. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know it was super long, but I really love this book and I would love if you guys decided to give it a try. If you do decide to give it a try, please tell me in the comment section what you thought of it or DM me on Instagram if you want to have a long, much more personal conversation about this beauty and everything that is Vida Nostra. Thank you all so much for watching. I love you all so much. And I'll see you guys all the next time on my channel. Bye, everybody. And hey, don't forget, I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye, everyone.